All right, we are in chapter 6, and chapter 6 talks about polygons and quadrilaterals. So in chapter 6.1, or in section 6.1, we're going to talk about the properties and attributes of polygons. The good news is, is that you'll know the basic shapes, and you'll understand some of what we're talking about. But we're also going to talk about new concepts involving the angle sum theorems and different shapes other than triangles. So why do we need to know this? Because... For example, in this camera lens, the opening that lets light into a camera lens is created by something called an aperture. Now, an aperture is a set of blades whose edges may form a polygon. So back in 2.4, you learned what a polygon was. Now you're going to learn parts of a polygon and how they determine other types of shapes. So each segment of a polygon is called the side. Pretty easy. Each vertex is the common endpoint of two sides, and a diagonal is a segment that connects any two non-consecutive vertices, because consecutive vertices would be a side. So as you can see from the number of sides and the name of polygons, those are easy. So as you can see here, this polygon A, B, C, D, E would be called the pentagon. An example one. We're just going to identify polygons. Really easy. Tell whether each figure is a polygon. If it is, name it. Now remember that a polygon is a closed plane formed by three or more segments that intersect only at their endpoints. A would be a pentagon. B would not be a polygon because they are not connected by their endpoints. You would have to connect them rather than going across from each other by just their endpoints. C is a polygon, and that would be called a octagon because it does have eight sides. Now, all the sides are congruent in an equilateral polygon. All the angles are congruent in an equal angular polygon. A regular polygon is one in which is both equilateral and equiangular. So if you know of a reg regular polygon, it's both equilateral and equiangular. If a polygon is not regular, it is called irregular. Now, a polygon is concave if any part of the diagonal contains points in the exterior of the polygon. If no diagonal contains points in the exterior, then the polygon is called convex. A regular polygon is always convex. So let's look here. This is a quadrilateral. Now you're going to look at this and say, but it doesn't look like one. It has four sides. It is a quadrilateral. It's concave, however, because the diagonal contains points in the exterior of the polygon. So because this point right here is within this diagonal, it's concave. But these diagonals do not have any of the exterior points here. So this is convex. This is concave. They are both quadrilaterals. So in example two, classifying them, A would be irregular, and it is convex. Regular, this is regular because all the angles and all the sides are the same, and it would also be convex. This is irregular because all of the angles and all of the sides, now you may say to yourself, well, wait a minute. Why is it irregular if all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles are congruent? Because all of the angles are not congruent. This angle right here is not going to be congruent to either of these or these. These right here are going to be over 180 degrees. All of the sides are congruent, however. It's irregular and it's concave. Another way people think of concave and convex, concave will bend inward, convex will not. So now we're going to start talking about how you find the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex polygon. So we're going to draw all the possible diagonals from one vertex of the polygon. This creates a set of triangles. So here's what we've done. Here's a triangle. We've taken a quadrilateral, a pentagon, and a hexagon from one vertex and connected it to all the others to make diagonals. And more importantly, 
we've made a set of triangles with each, within each polygon. So if we look here, the interior here would be 180 degrees. This one is going to be 180 degrees times 2. This one's going to be 180 degrees times 3 since we have 3 triangles. This one, we have 4 triangles, so we take 180 times 4. The sum of the angle measures of all the triangles equals the sum of the angle measures of the polygon. So this one would be 180. This one is 360. This one is 540. And this one is 720. Now there's a formula that will give you all of this. And let's look at our table. A triangle has three sides. A quadrilateral has four sides, five sides, six sides. Now an n-gon has n sides. But let's look at what we have here. In a quadrilateral, how many triangles do we have? We had two. We had three in a pentagon. We had four in a hexagon. And you take each of those numbers and you times them by 180 to give you the total interior angle measures of a polygon. But more importantly, if we have n sides, how do you go from 3 to 1? 4 to 2. 5 to 3. 6 to 4. We subtract 2. That is the relationship between the number of sides and the number of triangles that is made. So we take n minus 2 to get the number of triangles, and we multiply that by 180. So in each convex polygon, the number of triangles formed is always 2 less than the number of sides n. So the sum of the angle measures of all of these triangles would be n minus 2 times 180, which is actually the polygon angle sum theorem. So the polygon angle sum theorem, remember, triangle triangle sum theorem is that all three angles of a triangle have a sum of 180. This is to find everything else. So all you would do is you would take to find the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex polygon, you would take the number of sides, subtract 2, and then multiply by 180. And that is called the polygon angle sum theorem. So in example 3, Find the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex octagon. Well, we know that 180 times n minus 2, the reason because of that would be the, pi, uh, I'm sorry, the polygon angle sum theorem. So this reasoning is the polygon angle sum theorem. 180, we plug in 8, 8 minus 2 is 6. We just take 180 minus 6, which gives us 1,080 degrees. It's that easy. The next one. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular nonagon. Now a nonagon is nine sides. So we take 180 times nine minus two. That gives us, we have seven triangles. Nine is the number of sides. Minus two gives me seven. Seven times 180 gives me 1,260 degrees. But that gives me the sum of all of the interior angles. I just want each angle. So then you just take 1,260 divided by 9, which is the number of sides. That means if we have 9 sides, we have 9 angles. And our final answer would be 140 degrees. So if I asked you, if I asked you, like your reasoning for each of these steps, you would say, this is the polygon angle sum theorem. We substitute it in, and then we divide it by 9 because the interior angles are congruent, so we divide by 9. In our last example, we want to find the measure of each angle, which means I have to find the value of C. So the first thing we know is that all of the angle measures added up would be 3C plus 3C plus 1C plus 1C, which gives me 8C, equals. Well, I would take 180 times the number of sides, and I subtract 2. That would give me 8C equals. Well, 4 minus 2 gives me 2. 180 times 2 is 360. I divide both sides by 8, and the value of C would equal 45. 
So that means my interior angle measures would be the measure of angle P, which would also be the same as the measure of angle R, would equal 45 degrees. The measure of angle Q, which would also equal the measure of angle S, would equal 3 times 45, which is 135 degrees. We are now going to start talking about exterior angles. In the polygons below, an exterior angle has been measured at each vertex. Notice that in each case, the sum of the exterior angle measures is 360. Now, once again, we could have gotten that because we know each of these, like for example, this angle here and 81 are supplementary. The same thing about 147 in this angle and this angle and 132. If we added these up, even though that this is a triangle and this is a pentagon, they still add together to give you an exterior angle measure a sum of 360, which gives us the polygon exterior angle sum theorem. The sum of the exterior angle measures, one angle at each vertex of a convex polygon, is going to always be a 360 degrees. So example 4a. Find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular hexagon. Well, a hexagon has three sides and three angles. We know that the sum of all of those angles will always be 360, so we just take 360 degrees divided by six angles, which means each exterior angle would be 60 degrees. Really easy. In example B, we want to find the value of A in polygon RSTUV. Well, as you can see, we have five angles. If we add them all up, we would get 20A. We know that they all have to have a sum of 360. So 20A equals 360. A would give me 18. So find the value of A. It's 18. Back to talking about our camera. In example 5, we're talking about the aperture of a camera. It is formed by 10 blades. The blades overlap to form a regular decagon. What is the measure of angle CBD? CBD is what type of angle? It's an exterior angle. Well, a decagon has how many angles and how many sides? It has 10. So we have 10 exterior angles. We know that they all have to add up to give you 360 degrees. We divide by 10, therefore, that will give you each angle as 36 degrees. So the measure of angle CBD would be 36 degrees. The three vocab words I want you to make note of would be regular polygon, which actually would lead us into irregular polygon as well, concave and convex.